This is the FM Gold channel of All India Radio. In the program news analysis, now we bring you a discussion on National Conference on Public Procurement and Competition Law. The participants are T.K. Arun, Economic Analyst, and Arjun J. Chaudhary, Journalist. Arun Ji, if we look at this conference that's taking place right now, how important do you see due process in public procurement so that any allegations of wrongdoing is not made and if there is any allegation made, then once again there is proper investigation and inquiry into wrongful conduct. Public procurement is very, very large for any economy. Across the world, the size of government procurement is anything up to 10 to 15 percent of GDP. The size of the Indian government budget is 25 percent of GDP, including state governments. General government budget is around even more than a quarter of the GDP. Of this, excluding salaries, the rest of it all basically becomes public procurement. You are buying goods and services and investing. And this is a sizable chunk of the economy which is regulated by the government. And this is done by the government not only for buying things cheap for the government, but also to promote certain kinds of industry, to promote certain groups of industry, such as small-scale sector. And there is some preference for domestic industry in this, which is why the World Trade Organization has been trying to push through an agreement on government procurement so that this also becomes open to international competition beyond a particular threshold and it is open to companies from around the world to take part. So India is not a member of this WTO agreement on public procurement which is a plurilateral agreement meaning that all members don't have to be part of this. Those who want to join up can sign up and be part of this. India is an observer, not a member. Only a few advanced countries have joined as members. India might not actually rush to join this right now because India sees a role for promoting small scale industry. Perhaps you can think of saying that a part of the startup ecosystem can be promoted by the government procuring from them. You look at the entire Silicon Valley development in California. This grew because the Red Advanced Project Agency, DARPA, it would put out tenders for new startups coming out of the Stanford University ecosystem. And they would award contracts to those from these startups who seem to be convincing, economically reasonable, technologically competent bids to satisfy the requirements put up by DARPA. And this was the basis for the growth of the entire Silicon Valley model, from which the entire US economy, and in fact the world at large, have gained from those experiments. So there is much that India also can do by making further creative use of public procurement. So it is not just a question of using competition and fair process of tendering and competitive bids to minimize the cost of procurement for the government. It's also a way of actually promoting entrepreneurship in this country, of promoting small-scale industry and giving a thrust to various domestic sectors. So the technical requirements that is met by technologically advanced companies who are bidding for government uh, contracts uh, would mean that you are opening a new market for these overseas companies. But right now, as you mentioned earlier, that there's a need and pressure on the part of government to promote employment. And that can do so only by encouraging the growth and development of MSMEs. And maybe if they can replicate the model of what's going on in the U.S., you mentioned about DARPA and the Stanford University ecosystem, they might see some results right now, but immediately when you look at any kind of public procurement policy, the first point that comes to mind is that the bid process is not rigged. And how important is bid rigging to the detriment of the growth and development that we're talking about right now? And what are the steps taken to avoid the rigging of bids? In, at a formal level, these policies have been around for a long time. For the government to buy anything, they have to issue a tender, you have to invite bids and only then you select supplier. So this is standard practice. But the problem is not going through a procedure of competitive bidding. Fixing the outcome is the issue. So for example, in 2012, I think, India suffered a stockout of tuberculosis medicines. In India, the supply of medicine for treating tuberculosis is done by the central government. It procures the medicine centrally and it distributes the medicine to all state governments and through them the public health centers which give treatment for TB free. Job of procuring it is for the central government. And the particular officer who was in charge of renewing the contracts for supplying this medicine 
didn't want to take the risk of being accused of favoring any particular supplier and he just retired without finalizing that the tender so while you had a formal procedure for competitive bidding because of the scope that still existed to be accused of causing a loss to the exchequer given the prevailing atmosphere then after the telecom scam there is particular officer in the health department he demitted office without finalizing the tender and as a result we had a stock out of tuberculosis medicines across the country so these kind of things can also happen but don't you see this as an adjustment period where questions on unethical conduct are being debated and discussed all over the country and taking a firm decision despite there being a procedure in place becomes difficult do you feel maybe now that the transition has taken place and a firm decision can be taken it is not taken even today to get payment out of this government is very very tough you would have won contract fairly you might have executed the work but you still don't get paid but there are payment systems in place they, where they don't work. they authorize and approve payments electronically so that the uh, supplier does not have to go through any officer uh, to demand payment if the works contract is over today you must have heard of the island of us crisis island of us defaulted on payments to the people who had given it money and why did it happen the government national highway authority of india owes island of us 14000 crore rupees they just cannot get this money out of the system so while you might think that there is a system in place there is the ability to uh, take decisions and so on and so forth ultimately the thing doesn't work there are companies that have gone virtually bankrupt because the government just didn't pay for the work private companies have done for it well that's a very serious accusation that it, you're making it is, uh, mr it is well what about uh, the role of cartels uh, where they join hands to fix a bit process isn't there a rule and regulation against that kind of misconduct available with the competition act 2002 and isn't the competition commission of india which is the authority that decides on wrongful conduct clearly best place to take action against the wrongdoers it has been doing some work but we must understand that competition is a fairly complex subject in many cases the findings of the competition commission have been overruled by the competition commission's own appellate authority and this is a combination of economics and law and commercial practice so it takes time for very competent and functional efficient competition process to be established in this country it is taking its time but it's very important in order to ensure that everything happens in a fair and transparent fashion and the government gets its bank for its buck we also have a merger control where companies are merging so that they can build up in terms of scale for bidding for such projects how important is control of such mergers you see that as an advantage or disadvantage to the bid process see we no longer control mergers see there used to be a time when we had the mrtpc the monopolies and the but you still require the approval of the competition commission yes, of india but we no longer see size of a company or its dominance in the market as a threat to the business or other interests only if there is any credible sign of misuse of dominance does the competition commission intervene so if companies merge to form a large entity there are certain situations where the structural change might affect the ability of the system to compete for example there are say six telecom players and through mergers and acquisitions the number has come down to two then is a structural weakness of the market then the competition commission will intervene but suppose there are three then the commission will say let them compete because uh, three is a fairly decent number to compete in a system it might vary from market to market from industry to industry so there are some structural issues that are taken into account after that the competition commission will look at the abuse of market power the dominant position if you don't abuse that power that power itself is not a matter of regret you spoke about the technical requirements and how india has an observer status with the wto when it comes WTO, to on the public procurement uh, on the public procurement side of wto when we talk about leniency are we talking about leniency in terms of technical requirements to meet a certain requirement uh, within the works contract we want to use our public procurement to promote domestic industry small scale industry our startup ecosystem so we think that we need greater flexibility how we deploy our public procurement instead of opening it up to international competition 
as would be required under the public procurement policy agreement and WTO. Of course, there also there are certain sectors which are exempt. There are certain thresholds above which only this agreement will kick in. But right now, India feels that we need some flexibility. But leniency could also be that you exempt the provider with from punishment even when they fail in their provision of service or material. Do you think maybe leniency is a very important factor when it comes to public procurement? All those policies are already in place. If somebody fails to comply with the requirements, then that person will be blacklisted, allowed to take part in the bidding in the future. We've seen that with the uh, metro public procurement where they maintain high technical standards because their procurement system is uh, quite well developed. Yes, it's not the government. It is a public sector company. It is not the government per se. So but it is based on a public-private partnership model, is it not? No, it is a wholly government-funded company, but it's a public sector undertaking. It is not the government per se. So government procurement is different from public sector procurement. So those fall under different norms and they are covered by uh, different conduct rules. Well, the Union Minister for Finance and Corporate Affairs, Sri Arun Jaitley, is a keynote speaker and will be the chief guest for the national conference that is being held uh, today. And the Prime Minister's office is clearly backing this conference on public procurement and competition law. How do you see them playing an important role in improving the ecosystem of public procurement and competition law? We have this competition authority which has been working for quite some time. And as I said, they need perhaps a larger staff, more well-developed uh, departments, the ability to look at things as they get going instead of somebody waiting for somebody to register a complaint with them. With the government, it's far easier, actually. Competition is not is to be ensured not only in government procurement. Competition has to be ensured in every single activity in the economy, every single sector, because it can affect the consumer ultimately and the competitive strength of the economy in the global marketplace. So the Competition Commission potentially is a very important body for making the whole economy competitive and capable of holding its own in the global marketplace. The global marketplace can also be difficult for generating employment within the economy if you have a foreign provider of service who wins the public procurement contract. Do you feel maybe we can divert such a winner of a contract to create goods and services within the economy or is it still relaxed for them to create them in their own economy and then to supply those goods and services? See, right now, India is the largest source of manpower for carrying out service contracts. Even if, say, IBM wins a contract, then IBM will employ the bulk of its staff within India. In fact, today, right now, the largest source of employment for IBM is actually India. So this is the case with almost any other global company. But not many service contracts have been won by foreign companies. What about manufactured goods? Manufacturing is a very important issue with the central government. The Make in India campaign is based actually on manufacturing. The government has a policy of procuring a certain amount, proportion of its purchases from the small-scale sector. Beyond that is, it will focus on the efficiency of pricing. If the government thinks that it can function efficiently by subsidizing Indian industry because it is Indian, it will be shortchanging the public. If you have to deliver service to the public and that requires certain purchases, your job is to procure them at the most competitive price possible. So there is a certain amount of money that the government can actually spend on subsidizing and promoting local industry. But beyond that, the focus must be on getting the best bang for the buck. So within this framework of protecting our infant industry and MSME, do you feel that the Competition Commission of India is effectively checking anti-competitive conduct? Competition Commission of India's role is fairly limited when it comes to government procurement. It is more required in the larger economy. The government procurement actually is guided by rules of competition. You have to tender, you have to evaluate the tender. If there is any mistake, you can be hauled up. There is a CAG, there is a vigilance commission. So by and large, the rule-bound system might be a little slow, but then it works effectively. Other sectors, you might need the competition commission to be even more vigilant than in the government procurement. Thank you so much, Mr. TK Arun. You are listening to a discussion on National Conference on Public Procurement and Competition Law. The participants were T.K. Arun, Economic Analyst, and Arjun J. Chaudhary, Journalist. The program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. This program is also available on our website, news.air.nic.in. You may email opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.